Now, we will discuss solutions to the assignment for week 7 on two port parameters and reciprocity. The first question is about a two port network consisting of control sources. This means that the network is not necessarily reciprocal, but for certain parameters of the control sources, it can be reciprocal. The question is to find the value of R m such that it is reciprocal. So, all we have to do is find the uh, two port parameters. Specifically, we have to find only uh, y 2 1 and y 1 2 or any of the 1 2 1 2 1 parameters uh, to check for reciprocity. Okay. So, first let us say we determine y 2 1 by connecting a voltage source v 1 and finding the current i 2 with port 2 short circuited. Okay. So, now this turns out to be quite easy this v x equals v 1. So, this current here is 1 milli Siemens times v 1. Now, port 2 is short circuited. So, no current flows through this 4 kilo ohm resistor and the current through this the voltage across this is equal to v 1. So, the current that flows there is v 1 by 4 kilo ohms equals 0.25 milli Siemens times v 1. So, this current I 2 equals this current minus that current which is equal to 0.75 milli Siemens times v 1. Okay. So, this number here is y 2 1. Now, we can evaluate y 1 2 by short circuiting port 1 applying a voltage v 2 to the second port and finding the current i 1. Okay. So, again let us see what happens across this 4 kilo ohms we have V 2 which means that the current here is V 2 by 4 kilo ohms or 0.25 milli Siemens times V 2. Across this we all again have V 2 which leads to a current V 2 by 4 kilo ohms or 0.25 milli Siemens times V 2. Now, this I x here which is 0.25 milli Siemens times V 2 gets multiplied by R m. So, the voltage here is 0.25 milli Siemens times R m times V 2. Okay, It is R m times I x, I x is this much. Now, this voltage appears across 4 kilo ohms also because of the short across the second port. So, the voltage this way equals that much. So, the current flowing this way is 0.25 milli Siemens times R m times V 2 divided by 4 kilo ohms. Okay. So, the total current I 1 equals the negative sum of this current and that current. Okay. So, it is equal to negative of 0.25 milli Siemens times V 2 plus 0.25 milli Siemens times R m divided by 4 kilo ohms times V 2, okay, which is basically So, this is y 1 2 okay, and that has to be equal to y 2 1. So, this whole thing has to be equal to 0.75 milli Siemens. Okay. So, from this we get R m divided by 4 kilo ohms to be equal to minus 1 milli Siemens divided by 
0.25 milli siemens equals minus 4. So, R m should be minus 16 kilo ohms. Okay. So, that is the answer. The next question is to determine the H parameters of the circuit that was given before. That is here after choosing the right value of R m. Okay. So, couple of things can be done. We have already determined a couple of uh, y parameters. So, we can go ahead complete all the y parameters and then convert them to h or we can evaluate h parameters from scratch. So, I am going to evaluate them from scratch. By applying a current to the first port and short circuiting the second port, we can find H11 and H21. Okay. So now, if I apply a current I1 to this port, the second port is short circuited. So this Ix will be equal to zero. Okay. So that means that this voltage source is zero volts. So this is also at zero. Okay. Now if you see this is at 0 volts, this is at 0 volts. So, whatever voltage V 1 you have here, V 1 by 4 kilo ohm flows there and another V 1 by 4 kilo ohm flows there and the sum of those two has to be equal to I 1. So, I 1 will be V 1 by 4 kilo ohms plus V 1 by 4 kilo ohms. So, H 1 1 which is the ratio of V 1 to I 1 with the second port short circuited will turn out to be 2 kilo ohms. Okay. Now, as far as I 2 is concerned, this is I 2. So, we have already determined that V 1 is I 1 times 2 kilo ohms. So, this current source here is 1 milli Siemens times 2 kilo ohms times I 1 or 2 times I 1. So, we have 2 I 1 over there and V 1 by 4 kilo ohms which is equal to I 1 by 2 over there. So, the net current I 2 is given by 2 I 1 minus I 1 by 2 which is 1.5 I 1. So, S 2 1 is I 2 by I 1 with V 2 being short circuited which is equal to 1.5. Okay. Now, for two more parameters, we have to apply a voltage to the second port with the first port left open circuited. Okay. So, if we apply V 2 here, this I x will be V 2 by 4 kilo ohms and this R m I x, we determined R m to be minus 16 kilo ohms. So, this R m times I x will be minus 4 times V 2. Okay. So, now we have to find V 1. We know that the current flowing this way is V 2 minus V 1 divided by 4 kilo ohms and the current flowing that way is V 1 minus the voltage at this point which is minus 4 times V 2 divided by 4 kilo ohms. Okay. So, V 2 minus V 1 by 4 kilo ohms equals V 1 plus 4 V 2 by 4 kilo ohms. Okay. So, this goes away and we will end up with minus 2 V 1 equals 3 times V 2. So, H 1 2 which is V 1 by V 2 with I 1 being 0 is minus 3 by 2 or minus 1.5. Now, this is a useful sanity check because we had chosen R m such that the network is reciprocal. We see that H 2 1 is plus 1.5 and H 1 2 is minus 1.5. We calculated this independently. 
but we know that it is reciprocal and h 1 2 has to come out to be minus h 2 1. Okay. And finally, we have to determine I 2. Okay. So, we already know two components of I 2 the current flowing here and the current flowing there. So, we need to find the current flowing there it is 1 milli Siemens times V x which is 1 milli Siemens times V 1 because V x is the same as V 1. So, this current here is One milli Siemens times V x, which is minus one point five times V two, and this is equal to minus one point five milli Siemens times V two. Okay. So I two is the sum of these three components. This is V two minus V one by four kilo ohms, which is V two minus minus one point five V two divided by four kilo ohms, and this one is V two by four kilo ohms, and this one is minus one point five milli Siemens times V two. So, this will be V 2 times two point five by four kilo ohms plus one by four kilo ohms minus one point five. Milli Siemens, which is equal to V two times point six two five milli Siemens plus point two five milli Siemens minus one point five milli Siemens. So the answer turns out to be minus zero point six two five milli Siemens times V two. Okay. So H two two, which is I two by V two with port one open circuited, is point six two five milli Siemens. Okay. So H one one is two kilo ohms. H two two is minus 0.625 milli Siemens and H 1 2 is minus 1.5 H 2 1 is plus 1.5. Okay? Those are the answers. Now, this is another network with uh, control sources and you have to find the value of the control source G m such that the network is reciprocal. In this case, you can choose any parameter set. Let me choose uh, Z parameters. I have to find Z 1 2 and Z 2 1 and make them to be equal to each other. Okay. So, first I will apply I 1 and measure V 2 with port 2 open circuited. They should give me Z 2 1. Now, with uh, port 2 open circuited the current in this branch is uh, 0. So, V x is 0. So, this just goes away and we see that all of this current has to simply flow in this loop because nothing can go into that one. So, this V y is nothing but I 1 times 500 ohms and this voltage is 5 times V y which is 5 times 500 ohms times V y or 2.5 kilo ohms times V y and this V 2 is nothing but the voltage drop across this which is this one the voltage drop across this which is 0 plus the voltage drop across that which is half a kilo ohm times I 1. Okay. So, V 2 is 2.5 kilo ohm times I 1 plus half a kilo ohm times I 1 is 3 kilo ohm times I 1. Okay. So, Z 2 1 which is V 2 by I 1 with 
for to open is 3 kilo ohms. Now, we compute z 1 2 by applying a current here and open circuiting port 1. If we open circuit port 1, the current through this branch is 0 that is the combination of these two parallel branches that is 0 okay, whatever is coming out of there. Then, this I 2 flows into this resistor to give you 0.5 kilo ohm times I 2 across it okay. and this V x would be basically minus I 2 times 1 kilo ohm because of the polarity. So, this G m times V x is G m times minus 1 kilo ohm times I 2. So, the voltage drop in this direction because this current is simply flowing through that is G m times minus 1 kilo ohm times I 2 times 500 ohms or half a kilo ohm. Now, this V 1 is a sum of this voltage drop and that voltage drop. Okay. So, V 1 is remember voltage drop from here to there is the negative of this. So, it is G m times 1 kilo ohm times half a kilo ohm times I 2 plus half a kilo ohm times I 2. So, this is Z 1 2 and that has to be equal to Z 2 1 which is 3 kilo ohms. So, G m turns out to be 3 minus 1.5 which is 2.5 kilo ohms divided by half a kilo ohm times 1 kilo ohm okay, which gives you 5 milli Siemens. Okay. So, G m has to be 5 milli Siemens for this network to be reciprocal. Now, the next questions relate to G parameters of this network. Again, we can either use the Y parameters after finishing evaluation of uh, Y 1 and Y 2 2 or evaluate G parameters from scratch, we will do the latter. Okay. So, first we apply V 1 and leave port 2 open circuited. This gives us G 1 1 and G 2 1. Okay. So, if we apply V 1 like this, first of all we know that this current has to be 0 okay, because of the open circuit. So, V x is 0. So, this current source just goes away and this V 1 simply appears across a series combination of this 500 ohm and that 500 ohm okay, because no current flows through there. So, current V 1 divided by 1 kilo ohm which is a series combination of these two flows this way and V y will be half of V 1 okay. and this voltage here is 5 times V y. So, this is 5 times half of V 1 or 2.5 times V 1. Okay. So, first of all the current here I 1 is V 1 by 1 kilo ohm. So, G 1 1 which is I 1 by V 1 with port 2 open circuited is 1 milli Siemens and G 2 1 which is V 2 by V 1 with port 2 open circuited is this voltage here is this voltage which is 2.5 V 1 plus that voltage which is 0 plus that voltage which is half of V 1. So, the whole thing is 3 times V 1 divided by V 1 or 3. So, G 1 1 is 1 milli Siemens and G 2 1 is 3. Okay. Now, we can evaluate the other two parameters by connecting a current source I 2 short circuiting the first port and finding V 2 and I 1. Okay. 
So, now we know that this V x equals minus I 2 times 1 kilo ohms, because I 2 is simply flowing through this and this g m V x will be in this direction minus g m times 1 kilo ohm times I 2. Okay. So, the current here of course, is I 2. Now, the voltage here let me call this V by as is denoted there. We have a number of uh, relationships. This current here is V by divided by 500 ohms. Okay. And similarly, the voltage here is also V y because of the short circuit on the first port. So, the current here is V y divided by 500 ohms. Okay. So, applying K C L here, we will get I 2 to be V y divided by 500 ohms plus V y divided by 500 ohms minus the current through this G m, which is minus G m times 1 kilo ohm times I 2. Okay. So, this whole thing gives you 4 milli Siemens plus G m times 1 kilo ohm and we know that G m is 5 milli Siemens. 5 milli Siemens times 1 kilo ohm times I 2. Okay. So, now we take it to the other side and we will find that V y is I 2 times 1 minus 5 divided by 4 milli Siemens or 1 kilo ohm times I 2. Okay. So, now you look at what I 1 is, you can see that I 1 is nothing but whatever current is flowing here or the negative of that and that current is I 2 minus V y by 500 ohms. Okay. So, I 1 is V y by 500 ohms minus I 2 or minus 1 kilo ohm times I 2 divided by 500 ohms minus I 2 or minus 3 times I 2. So, G 1 2 which is I 1 by I 2 with port 1 short circuited is minus 3. Okay. Now, earlier we determined G 2 1 to be 3 and G 1 2 is minus 3. We know that this is reciprocal. So, that satisfies sanity check. If you know that it is reciprocal, we do not have to independently determine that, but just as an exercise I did that and now confirm that it is reciprocal again in another way. Now, we have to find V 2 to find G 2 2. So, V 2 is nothing but the voltage drop across that plus the voltage drop across that okay, plus this. So, V 2 would be 5 times V y which is 5 times minus 1 kilo ohm times I 2 plus 1 kilo ohm times I 2 that is the voltage drop across that plus V y itself which is minus 1 kilo ohm times I 2. Okay. So, the whole thing comes out to be basically minus 5 kilo ohm plus 1 kilo ohm minus 1 kilo ohm or minus 5 kilo ohm times I 2. So, G 2 2 is V 2 by I 2 with uh, port 1 shorted which is minus 5 kilo ohms. Okay. this will be minus 5 kilo ohms. The next problem you are given A and you are told that N is a purely resistive network. There are also some resistors outside, but uh, the part with resistors if you represent it as a two port will be reciprocal of course. Then 
you are asked to find what happens in B. Now, first thing to recognize is that network A and B, when you set the independent sources to zero, are exactly the same. Because if you set the independent sources to zero, this becomes a short circuit. So, between one and one prime, you have one kilo ohm. Here also, between one and one prime, you have one kilo ohm. Although it is split up as 0.5 and 0.5, you have one kilo ohm there. And if you open circuit this, on the other side also, you simply have one kilo ohm. Okay. So there are many many ways of doing this. You can write the two port parameters for this uh, network N and this at network N and solve it. And the condition that you get from the reciprocity of resistive networks is that this N is reciprocal. But the easiest way to do it is define a new uh, two port where this reciprocity can be applied. Okay. So, first we know that this voltage here is 2 volts, it is 2 milliamp times 1 kilo ohm. Okay. So, now if I think of uh, this as my 2 port, let us say this is my 1 1 prime and 2 2 prime, the ratio of this voltage to that voltage that is basically G to 1 which is given by 2 volts divided by 10 volts or it is one fifth. Now, whatever I have enclosed in this, the new 2 port I have defined is purely resistive and therefore, reciprocal. Okay. So, now, what happens is that, let us say I remove this, I replace this with a short circuit and I apply a current source here and call this I 2 and call this I 1. So, my G 1 2 will be I 1 by I 2 with uh, port 1 short circuited of the new 2 port and this will be minus G 2 1 or minus 1 fifth. Okay. So, now that is exactly the situation I have. I have this current source across this uh, 1 kilo ohm which is 5 milliamps. Okay. My I 2 is 5 milliamps and on this side, I do not have to do anything. It is simply 1 kilo ohm across 1 and 1 prime. So, I have 1 kilo ohm across 1 and 1 prime. So, this will be my I 1. I am just matching the quantities in this figure with that figure. So, I know that this I 1 in this direction is, is G 1 2 times I 2, which is minus 1 fifth times 5 milliamps or minus 1 milliamp. So, it means that basically 1 milliamp is flowing in that direction. So, V x it is very easy, it is 1 milliamp times half a kilo ohm, which is half a volt. Okay. So, V x equals half a volt, that is the answer. Now, in this case, you are given some combination of uh, two port with some sources and resistors outside and you are asked to find the Norton equivalent between 1 and 1 prime. Now, this may look slightly different in that before you found uh, Norton or Thevenin equivalents of uh, circuits with circuit components. Now, you have a two port, but the definitions are exactly the same. So, you find Norton current by short circuiting between the relevant terminals and finding the current. So, if you short circuit that and find the current in that branch, that will be the Norton current. Okay. So, now this I n will be whatever is coming there plus whatever is coming from there and we can treat the two separately because we have the port 2 of this short circuited through this. So, some current will come out of this and this is uh, short circuited through here. So, the current in this will be 14 volts divided by 10 kilo ohms is 1.4 milliamps. So, all I have to do is find the short circuit current of this whole thing okay? and that is not uh, difficult. So, if I use the two port notation, let me do that. This is V 2, which I have set equal to 0. So, this is I 2, this is V 1 and that is I 1. All I have to do is to write out the equations and eliminate the variables. 
Okay, first of all, I have the z parameter equations. By the way, sometimes it may be convenient to convert the z to y and so on. I will do it in the straightforward way. So, we will write out the two port equations first. V1 is 8 kilo ohm times I1 minus 1 kilo ohm times I2 and V2 is 20 kilo ohm times I1 plus 9 kilo ohm times I2. And we have the external constraints because of the short circuit V2 equals 0 and because of the source connected here I 1 is half a milliamp minus the current through this which is V 1 by 12 kilo ohms. I 1 is half a milliamp minus V 1 divided by 12 kilo ohms. Okay. From V 2 being 0 we get I 1 to be minus 9 by 20 times I 2 and substituting that in the first equation we get V 1 to be minus 8 kilo ohms times 9 by 20 times I 2 minus 1 kilo ohm times I 2 which basically turns out to be minus 92 kilo ohms by 20 times I 2 and I put that into this. So, I 1 is minus 9 by 20 times I 2 which is equal to half a milliamp minus V 1 divided by and V 1 itself is minus 92 by 20. So, 92 kilo ohm by 20 times 12 kilo ohm times I 2 and if I take it to that side, I will get minus 9 by 20 minus 92 divided by 20 times 12 equals half a milliamp. Okay. and this comes out to be if I multiply this by 12 I get 108 over there. Okay. The left hand side will be minus 200 divided by 240 times uh, I 2 equals half a milliamp. So, I 2 will be minus 0 0.6 milliamps. So, the current flowing this way is plus 0.6 milliamps. So, the total current that flows here is 1.4 plus 0.6 which is 2 milliamps. Okay. So, the Norton current is 2 milliamps and the Norton resistance is found by deactivating the independent sources by deactivating the independent sources. So, we have this current source open circuited, the voltage source short circuited and we can find the resistance in here whatever resistance we find that parallel with 10 kilo ohms because 10 kilo ohms appears directly across 1 1 prime is the net Norton resistance and this one again we write the two port equations. So, let us say this is I 2 and this is V 2. So, the resistance looking then there would be V 2 by I 2 and let us say this is V 1 and that is I 1. Okay. So, again we have the same two port relationships V 1 is 8 kilo ohms times I 1 minus 1 kilo ohms times I 2 and V 2 is 20 kilo ohm times I 1 plus 9 kilo ohm times I 2. Okay. We also have this constraint that V 1 is minus I 1 times 12 kilo ohm because only a 12 kilo ohm resistance is connected to port 1 nothing else. Okay. So, now if I substitute that in here, I will get minus I 1 times 12 kilo ohms equals 8 kilo ohms times I 1 minus 1 kilo ohm times I 2. Okay. And if I take this to this side and that to that side I 2 will be 20 times I 1. Okay. And I substitute that in here. So, I will get V 2 to be 20 kilo ohms times I 1 which is 20 kilo ohms times I 2 divided by 20 plus 9 kilo ohms times I 2 which simply turns out to be 10 kilo ohm times I 2. So, the resistance looking that way here is 
V 2 by I 2 which is 10 kilo ohms times I 2 divided by I 2 or 10 kilo ohm itself. So, the net resistance is the 10 kilo ohm offered by this part of the circuit in parallel with this 10 kilo ohm which gives us 5 kilo ohms. So, the not run resistance is 5 kilo ohms. Okay. And finally, this question here is it shows two uh, two port networks connected in some way and you can easily see that they are connected in parallel okay and h parameters are given for one and g parameters are given for the other one okay and you should find the y parameters of the combined network okay now if i call this i1a and i1b okay and let me call this V 1 and I 1. The voltage applied to port 1 of the first two port is V 1, the second two port is also V 1. Similarly, the voltage applied to port 2 of the first two port is V 2, if this is V 2 and this voltage is also V 2. Okay, The same voltage is applied to the two two ports and the currents I 1 will be I 1 A plus I 1 B. Similarly, if this is I 2, this is I 2 A, this is I 2 B. I 2 will be I 2 A plus I 2 B. So, we have same voltages currents adding up. So, the two ports are in parallel and you can see that if you represent both in uh, y parameter format, I would not show this, but you can easily write that and see the y parameters of the two networks will add up to give the overall y parameters. So, the easiest way is to convert this h parameter to y parameters, this g parameters to y parameters and move on. Okay? The way to convert from one parameter set to another is first of all, let us say I uh, will take the H parameter example. We have V 1 to be 1 kilo ohm times I 1 plus 0 0.8 times V 2 and I 2 to be 0 0.5 times I 1 plus 4.4 milli Siemens times V 2. So, you have to rearrange these equations such that we will have I 1 and I 2 on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have only V 1 something times V 1 plus something else times V 2 similarly for both equations. So, I will not show the steps of doing this, the calculations are straightforward. you can go ahead and do that, I will just show you the answers. So, the y parameters of the first network turn out to be this one, the y parameters of the second one turn out to be that one and we have to add the two to get the y parameters of the overall network. So, we get 1 plus 2.15 which is 3.15 milli Siemens minus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.25 which is minus 0.55 milli Siemens, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.3 which is 0 0.2 milli Siemens and 4 plus 0 0.5 which is 4.5 milli Siemens. Okay? So, that is the solution to this particular question.